Wu Lin understood that spirit refined metals would be the perfect choice for Yuanan. These metals would allow him to merge his body armor seamlessly with his ever growing physique, accommodating his transformation no matter how large he became. Despite the difficulty, Wu Lin was confident in his knowledge of battle armor creation and assured Yuanan that he would guide him through the process. Wu Lin pondered whether his battle armor could transform alongside his spirit essence. Uncertain, he turned to Yuanan for guidance. To his surprise, Yuanan confirmed that it was indeed possible, albeit a complex process. Wu Lin then requested Yuanan to refine a highly malleable metal for him. After considering his options, Wu Lin suggested using heavy silver, as it matched the metal of his armor, and he admired its ductility. Wu Lin began the refining process and swiftly completed it. Yuanan was astounded by his speed and efficiency. The metal had achieved the first grade thousand refinement, leaving Wu Lin feeling that a mere thousand contribution points were too little for such a remarkable accomplishment. Intrigued, Yuanan proposed a deal. If Wu Lin continued forging refined metals at the same price, he would reveal a secret about Shrek Academy. Wu Lin agreed, promising to provide a thousand refined products at that price exclusively. Wu Lin was curious about the secret behind working students, and why people reacted strangely when they discovered he was one. Yuanan explained that working students were often seen as outcasts. The academy typically accepted individuals who didn't pass the exams but excelled in a specific area, like work. Those with exceptional abilities were also admitted as working students. For instance, Elder Feng, whom Wu Lin had recently met, used to be a working student at Shrek Academy. He relied on his blacksmithing skills and graduated from the outer court at the age of 34. That year, he achieved a breakthrough as a sixth-level blacksmith and completed a remarkable forging work. He also succeeded in spirit refining, reaching rank 7, and became a saint blacksmith. Subsequently, he advanced from 6 to 9 rings, becoming a title duluo. Yuanan then asked if Wu Lin had any other questions. Wu Lin wondered why he hadn't entered the inner court yet considering his strength. Yuanan revealed that he was only 15 years old. He also mentioned being a third-rank mecha designer and offered Wu Lin a discount if he ever needed any designs in the future. As he continued his stroll, they eventually reached the area designated for their dormitory. It was there that they spotted the individual with the angel spirit essence, still on the hunt for the elusive red-haired girl. Yuanan, filled with anger, confronted him and made it clear that he did not know such a person, demanding that he step aside. The frustrated angel master, who had already been waiting for half a day, attempted to touch Yuanan's chest, triggering an explosive burst of fury from him. With a swift punch to the face, the holy angel spirit master was sent flying to the ground, where he sat in shock. Upon regaining his composure, he angrily questioned why he had been struck. Yuanan wasted no time in informing him that the area was strictly reserved for working students and ordered him to leave. The Holy Angel Spirit Master was convinced that they were harboring the evil Spirit Master and warned them against covering for her. Yuanan, however, reminded him that their academy had already investigated and found no evidence of such a presence. The Holy Angel Spirit Master insisted that he had seen it with his own eyes. This only fueled Yuanan's anger, as he pointed out that only working students were allowed in the dormitory area. By the academy's rules, they had every right to handle the situation as they saw fit if he trespassed. The Holy Angel Spirit Master responded by hurling insults at the working students, which Yuanan interpreted as a declaration of war against them all. In a bold move, the Holy Angel Spirit Master claimed to have a way to prove his suspicions and promptly left. Wu Lin, curious about the red-haired student, asked Yuanan if there was any truth to the Holy Angel Spirit Master's claims. Yuanan, with absolute certainty, denied the existence of such a person. However, Wu Lin couldn't help but suspect that Yuanan was hiding something. He pondered over Yuanan's origins and questioned why he had not pursued a place in the inner courts. Wu Lin reached out to teacher Mu Chen, bursting with excitement as he shared the news of his acceptance into Shrek Academy. Mu Chen couldn't help but feel immensely proud of the boy. However, Wu Lin had more to discuss. He had made a significant breakthrough in forging, but Mu Chen's hesitation was evident. Concerned for his safety, Mu Chen advised Wu Lin to hold off on attempting spirit refining until he reached rank 30. Promising to visit him in a few days, Mu Chen wanted to continue their conversation in person. Wu Lin couldn't contain his joy at the prospect of attending Shrek Academy. Mu Chen, on the other hand, had been there for far too long and felt it was time for a change. Wu Lin eagerly recounted the events in Shrek City to Mu Chen, but there was something else he needed to share. Feng Yu, a renowned figure, wanted to take him as his disciple. Mu Chen, trying to hide his anger, swiftly ended the call, assuring Wu Lin that they would meet soon. Determined to secure his position as Wu Lin's mentor, Mu Chen made a bold decision. He declared his resignation and demanded train tickets to Shrek City. Frustration fueled his words as he expressed his unwillingness to sit idly by while his disciple was taken away. 
Without hesitation, he dialed a number and demanded to speak to the president. Despite being informed of an ongoing meeting, Mu Chen insisted that he needed to convey his resignation. At Shrek Academy, Senior Yuanan graciously covered the cost of Wu Lin's meal. Curiosity peaked, Wu Lin asked about the number of working students at the academy. Yuanan revealed that there were six last year, but two had graduated. Two others had moved on to the inner courts, while one had withdrawn from the academy. This left Wu Lin as the sole member of the previous batch. Suddenly, the Angel Master interjected, accusing Yuanan of lying and reminding him about the red-haired girl. The Angel Master emphasized that it was the duty of every holy angel spirit master to eliminate evil, and that responsibility fell squarely on his shoulders. He commanded them to stop hiding the girl from him, warning of dire consequences if he were to catch her. Furthermore, he revealed that his application to become a working student had been approved, granting him access to the dormitory. If the girl was there, he vowed to find her. Wu Lin couldn't help but feel that the Angel Master was being irrational. After all, the Enforcer had already confirmed that the girl wasn't an evil spirit master. Even if he did find her, what did he expect to happen? Nevertheless, the Angel Spirit Master remained convinced that fallen Angel Spirit Masters were inherently evil, and he was determined to prove his point. Wu Lin's curiosity got the better of him, and he wondered if being rich also meant having a high number of contribution points. The Angel Spirit Master confirmed this, boasting about his Holy Angel Clan's thriving business on campus. Wu Lin then asked if the Angel Spirit Master needed any medals forged, proudly displaying his blacksmith badge. The Angel Master couldn't believe his eyes when he discovered that Wu Lin, a mere 13-year-old, was already a fourth-ranked blacksmith. In comparison, the Angel Master himself was 15 and only a rank 2 student. However, he had to spend his entire first grade in seclusion with his clan. Impressed by Wu Lin's talent, the Angel Master assured him that he would seek his services in the future and encouraged him to continue working hard to improve his skills. Zi then asked Wu Lin about his plans for the night. Gu Yue had to report to the local Spirit Pagoda branch, while Wu Lin mentioned that the rest of them needed to report to the Tang sect. However, before anything else, they had to find Teacher Wu. Zi, on the other hand, had a different idea. He suggested that they should have some fun that night. Although they had passed the entrance exam, the competition at Shrek Academy was intense. Additionally, the Academy placed great importance on secondary professions, especially for those aspiring to become battle armor masters. They needed to excel in their secondary professions, and any free time they had should be dedicated to practicing and honing their skills. Later in the dormitory, Wu Lin found solace in meditation. From that point forward, his daily routine consisted of attending morning classes, spending two hours forging in the afternoon, and utilizing every spare moment to cultivate his skills. His goal was to reach rank 30 as quickly as possible and obtain his third spirit ring. Once that milestone was achieved, he could attempt spirit refining once again. Wu Lin had already attained the strength of a fifth-rank blacksmith, which meant that he could offer his assistance to others in spirit forging and ask them to provide the necessary medals. The advantage of being in the fifth rank was that he faced no consequences if he failed to forge a medal. Wu Lin began accepting commissions, using them as an opportunity to practice spirit refinement despite its high failure rate. The minimum commission for spirit refinement was ten times that of a thousand refinements job. This made it a lucrative endeavor. Spirit refined metals served as the foundation for two-word battle armor, making the entire outer court his potential customer base. As he accumulated enough contribution points, he planned to use them to purchase items that would aid his cultivation and help him break the next Golden Dragon King seal. Wu Lin had a well-thought-out plan, and by following this cycle, he knew he could improve himself at a faster pace. The following day during class, Shen Yi announced that they would be choosing their class representatives. A competition would determine the class president, with other positions going to those who displayed exceptional skills. The class officers included the president, two vice presidents, and various committee members. Each representative would receive bonus contribution points, with the president earning 1,000 points per month and the vice presidents and committee officials earning 500 points per month. If the president became a battle armor master by 25, they would be automatically admitted to the inner court upon graduation. However, one had to achieve this by 35 to be considered a member of Shrek. Shen Yi then appointed Wu Lin as the blacksmith representative, as he already had a fourth-rank blacksmith badge. When a student questioned why Wu Lin didn't have to compete, Shen Yi explained that the blacksmith committee didn't require competition. Wu Lin's skills were evident when he revealed his badge, shocking the other student, who was only a third-rank blacksmith. Shen Yi then proceeded to elaborate that the competition for the president and vice president roles was about to commence at the Grand Martial Arts Arena. The ultimate survivor would claim the title of class president, while the next two would become vice presidents. The duties of the class president were weighty, requiring patience and a strong sense of responsibility. 
Many of the Sea Lord Pavilion's elders had previously held these positions. Ulin felt motivated and resolved to vie for the presidency. With 15 minutes to prepare, they could team up. Ulin understood that it was not just a test of strength, but also a test of intelligence. He assigned Zi and Xiao Yan to form a group, and despite their disappointment, they followed their leader's orders. Their classmates, initially strangers, quickly formed a bond of friendship. Out of the blue, one of their fellow students approached Wu Lin and Gu Yue, asking if Wu Lin was the renowned fourth-rank blacksmith. Wu Lin confirmed this, and the student, Yang Nianxia, expressed his desire to team up with them. Yang Nianxia was a power-type spirit master with a formidable spirit essence known as the Dusk Gold Bear. This particular bear was hailed as the strongest among all bear-type spirit essences. Wu Lin gladly accepted Yang's offer and introduced himself and Gu Yue. He explained that he was a control-type spirit master, while Gu Yue specialized in elemental-type abilities. Yang, admitting his lack of strategic skills, inquired about their plan and their strengths. Wu Lin reassured him that all he needed to do was focus on showcasing his abilities, leaving the rest to Wu Lin and Gu Yue. Gu Yue's role would be to draw enemies towards her, allowing Wu Lin to defeat them, while also providing ranged attacks and support. Shen Yi excitedly led the group, promising an adventure in an illusionary world akin to the Spirit Ascension platform. As they stepped into the forest, she assured them that the boundaries were close, ensuring they would reunite swiftly. Each member could select their egg, with the option to be near their friends. Before entering their cabins, she reminded them to fasten their seatbelts. Wu Lin pondered if their time at Shrek Academy meant they no longer required visits to the Spirit Ascension platform for combat practice. Don't forget to like and comment for the next part. Join our Discord for the name of the book and subscribe for more videos from us.